Well, good evening, everybody. I am going to uh, I'm going to be uh, making our first speaker host uh, tonight, and his name is uh, Jordan Kramer. He's the uh, chief of fire and emergency management for South Strabane Fire Department, which is in uh, Washington County, Pennsylvania. And Washington County is uh, west, southwest of uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Allegheny County. And uh, Jordan is the fire chief of a combination fire department uh, that serves a municipality of about uh, 18 to 20,000. Uh, and Jordan is also very active in the International Association of Fire Chiefs Volunteer and Combination section. And Jordan previously was a career firefighter uh, with the Peters Township Fire Department in Washington County. So with that, uh, Jordan, I will uh, kick it over to you. And you know, just in case, maybe just keep your eye on if anybody tries to join me. So with that, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Jerry. And thanks for having me on here. I'm gonna share my screen. And we'll get started. Yeah. All right. You able to see that? All right, Jerry. Yeah. I'm good to go. I can see it. Beautiful. Actually, I got to redo it real quick so I can share the audio. Yeah. Um, he, uh... The only time he got like a bit of excitement in his voice, like yelling or anything. All right. Jordan, if you could mute everybody, you could do that too. I just don't remember how to do it. So. Yeah, I'm going to do that now here. All right. All right, so again, thanks for having me on, Jerry. I've got a few slides to talk about some community fire academy and youth camps and using those to, to bolster recruitment and community support um, within our organizations. Um, so I'm gonna skip over some of it because you covered it. But again, my name's Jordan Kramer. I've got a lot of experience on both the volunteer and career sides of organizations, specifically in combination systems. Um, I'm a big proponent of community-oriented combination fire service delivery. Uh, again, I'm currently the Chief of Fire and Emergency Services in South Germain Township, which is in southwestern Pennsylvania. So the first thing we'll talk about is the, some of the benefits and mainly some unexpected benefits of a Citizen Fire Academy that we had the chance to resume in 2019 just prior to the pandemic. Um, so it's a, a bit of a case study and we, we did it again after the pandemic and actually during the pandemic, and it proved to be, to have some difficulties trying to present it in that era. But, um, this is the best example we have of some of the successes. So originally my organization or my previous organization had hosted one in 2012 and we got a lot of positive feedback from it. It resulted in one career firefighter, which is right here. Um, or it, it resulted in one volunteer firefighter. Um, he joined as a junior. He then joined as a, a regular volunteer. And oddly enough, he now worked for me in my new department as a part-time firefighter. Um, some of the things that we found with it were that it was very time consuming. It's very resource intensive, both in PPE and in personnel. And those were some of the difficulties that we found um, while presenting the course. So as we looked to try to revamp this program and reintroduce it uh, to our organization, we found it necessary to try to partner with uh, one of our neighboring departments. Um, so these two departments work hand in hand every single day with auto aid. And it made sense for us to try to run the academy with them. So I reached out to a representative from their organization, and we got a lot of buy-in uh, from North Strabane North as well. What that allowed us to do was to, to combine resources um, and PPE, personnel. We were able to share the cost of the program together because, again, these programs aren't cheap. Um, 
total, we probably spent about $5,000 on it. And that doesn't include some of the personnel and labor costs that were included since career firefighters were involved in the delivery of the programs. But this allowed us to share the cost um, and also showcase the relationship between the two departments since we work so closely together. So in order to plan that, it involved a lot more collaboration between two organizations to be able to really get this off the ground. Uh, we wanted to develop our purpose and learning objectives uh, that we're going to support those. One of the first bumps we got to was just the length of the program um, and when we were going to do it. The goal was to try to hit that sweet spot of not overdoing it, keeping people engaged. Um, and we were doing this in the fall. So we were kind of competing with the beginning of the school year as well as the holiday season. So what we landed on was a six week course plus graduation. We decided to do three hour classes. Uh, we had to start looking at things like liability and waivers. Um, you know, we had to get our solicitor and department attorneys involved just to make sure that uh, we were covered with uh, everything that we were doing. We reviewed marketing strategies of how we could get this off the ground, how we were gonna do our application and selection process, and then obviously how we could measure this program at the outcome in the end. Um, other things that we had determined were the minimum age. So our department was heavy in a volunteer uh, junior program. The other department at the time, not so much. Um, so we ended up having the minimum age is 18, but you know decided that in future years, we were gonna drop it and allow juniors as well. The other difficulties that arise when you try to do a program like this are obviously the availability of gear, but also the sizes um, and the apparel that we pass out and all of those types of things. What we ended up with was a, a purpose to increase the awareness of emergency and non-emergency services provided by both of the organizations. And we were hoping that that would result in a greater understanding of our organizations, the financial and human resource needs and the dedication required by both career and volunteer firefighters. So again, we wanted to increase awareness of the fire departments, the fact that we were a accommodation system. We faced a lot of uh, public disinformation about how the departments were comprised. You'd have 50% of residents thinking that they were all volunteer organizations with the other 50% thinking that they were all career. Very few residents actually understood the combination system. Um, the va we wanted them to understand the vast uh, level of service that we provided to the township as well as the non-emergency services and the mutual aid relationship that we had not only with the other organization we were delivering this course with, but the many other communities that surrounded us. We wanted to increase the understanding of the financial needs of the organization, um, the awareness of the personnel requirements, the education requirements, um, and adequate knowledge to participants in order to take action to minimize or stop a fire life safety emergency. And then obviously through this program, we were hoping to gain some uh, volunteers for our organizations. So again, our learning objectives uh, to learn about their local fire departments, how to handle an emergency when it occurs. We were really big in wanting them to understand the complete 911 system. So from the moment that they picked up their phone, until the moment that uh, a fire truck, ambulance, or police officer arrived at their home. And then also the demands of firefighters. So we focused in one of our last days a lot on both the physical and mental demands um, and told that this career, whether it's a volunteer or a paid firefighter, what it takes on somebody. Um, and that was very powerful for them to be able to see that. Quick overview of our course. So session one was a general welcome and introduction, department operations, we did station tours, history of the fire service, and then we handed out gear and uniform. Session two was engine company operations. So we covered fire dynamics, fire attack, hydrants and hoses, and we did fire extinguisher training with live fire. Session three was truck company operations, which included ladders, search and rescue and overhaul, and during that session, we allowed people to operate the aerial. I believe we allowed uh, folks to go in our neighboring department's bucket so that they could see the height. And we actually did some search and rescue scenarios. Session four was based on rescue. 
uh, including vehicle, rope, and water. Session five, EMS and emergency management. So we did first aid. Everybody came away with a first aid, uh, a CPR card, and stop the bleed training. Session six, which was our final session, was the 911 center um, and the Department of Public Safety tour. So we took them to the actual dispatch center, um, allowed one of the supervisors to talk with folks. Um, it was a really good opportunity for everybody that was there to actually learn the full system holistically. And then on our way back from that, we stopped at uh, a medical helicopter uh, station that they were able to explain to some of our participants what exactly they do um, and why they're also so important within the emergency services system. One of the things that kind of dropped off with this course that with the next offering we were looking to fix was each student was supposed to be required to participate in a ride along. Um, and those were scheduled individually so that we weren't, we didn't have too many lay people um, to look after at a given time. So that was one of the things that, uh, again, it dropped off a little bit, but that's something that we had looked to fix on the following ones. So when we looked at trying to launch this program, marketing was one of our first steps of how do we get this out? Um, and that started with a press release and contacting uh, journalists with print media in our area. And we had a number of articles that ended up going out in local magazines, as well as uh, the papers. We did a lot of social media advertising via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then our township, our municipalities email blasts actually were a great opportunity for us to be able to reach a lot of residents. That proved successful in probably getting seven or eight people uh, to apply in addition to the others. We launched a joint website, which was important to us. Since we were two separate organizations, we wanted one central place that people could come to. Um, and then we did some paid social media, media advertising, which if you're not familiar, it's a pretty affordable way to reach a lot of people. What this resulted in was approximately 16 applicants within seven days. 13 of them were from one municipality and three were from another. Um, so we wanted that to be a little bit more equal, but it was what it was. We had six, six males and 10 females. And then we ended up with 10 participants of the 16 that were over the age of 60. That was a number that was a little bit surprising to all of us. And uh, to be honest, when we were starting this, it was a little bit concerning to me. Um, everything from logistically to getting them in fire gear and trying to have them complete fire related tasks. Um, I was concerned about that. And obviously, with one of the goals of this program being to recruit active firefighters, um, it wasn't necessarily our, our target demographic. So as you'll see in the coming slides, I was pretty pleasantly pleased with the results, though. So this was our night one orientation. We handled our introductions and paperwork, gear handouts, uh, station and apparatus stores. At the end of night one, we realized that this was going to be far different than what we had expected. Um, after we got done with night one and we kind of had a minute to sit around and talk, the level of interest that was shown by the participants was just unprecedented and different than any other public education or um, you know, fire prevention program that any of us had ever done. We had adult learners that were truly hanging on the end of every single word and they wanted to be there. Um, we learned that age was not a concern. While we understood the fact that some of those participants weren't necessarily gonna be our recruits for active firefighters, we did find that they were lifelong residents of our community um, that had been paying taxes for years and they deserved to learn more about their fire department. Um, and what it turned into was some great advocates for us as we moved forward. Some other thing we, picked up from it were uh, less PowerPoint and more question time. The questions were incredibly relevant and thorough. Um, so just through answering those, it took up a lot of each class. Some key takeaways from the course in and of itself um, was that it informed uh, an incredible relationship. We increased our relationship, both organization to organization between the two departments that were offering the course, um, between our departments and the students, 
And then we watched a really impressive uh, relationship build from student to student. Um, what we also gained was long-term buying from students. Um, so they're checking in frequently, passing info to friends, families, neighbors. At the end of each class, they were calling someone else to, uh, to pass on information and it trickles down. Um, increased public support via social media. Uh, many of these people coming to our council and township meetings and they were vocal about the needs of the department. This also resulted in three volunteer firefighters, two of which were female. Um, some things that we look to add uh, would be adding an additional week of time. So that would result in a seven week program plus a week for graduation. Uh, we're looking to research to do some type of approved live fire exercise. Obviously there's liability and some uh, laws that come into effect with that, but there are workarounds because there are departments that do it um, in Pennsylvania. Less PowerPoint, we wanna keep concepts simple uh, at a layperson level with more hands-on activities. And it also resulted in non-emergency volunteers uh, for community response team. Finally, it was a, a lot of deep meeting to so many participants, not only the residents that were part of the program, but to our firefighters who had the opportunity to present. So I've got a quick video here that our media department was able to throw together after, and uh, it kind of highlights what the takeaways were for the, uh, the residents themselves. And hopefully the sound transfers over. We recently had the opportunity to partner with North Shurbane Fire Department to provide the Citizens Fire Academy to both of our communities. The Citizens Fire Academy is a way for a citizen to learn about the inner workings of the fire department, why we do certain things the way we do them. Signing up to be a part of the Citizens Fire Academy gives a resident a really unique opportunity to get a behind the scenes look at what our department and organizational does for the community. We came down for an open house. And I was like, this is really cool. And then somebody, I think one of the chiefs or the chiefs wrote back and said, well, we're going to have a Citizens Fire Academy. I said, sign me up. This particular course uh, taught me a lot about things to look for, things like keep your doors closed uh, during a fire. Uh, there was just a lot of, a lot of good information that, that I gathered from this class. Obviously connecting with the community, I think, is what is good about having these types of programs. Uh, the hands-on is, is incredible, which I did not expect. I think the most beneficial part of this class is learning how many different things the fire department does. Every week I had things that I was bringing home and telling my husband and telling my friends. I really like the fact that we learned a lot about emergency medicine while we took this class. Every week I went home with another new thing. My biggest takeaway from being involved in the Citizens Fire Academy was more of an insight from the citizen's point of view about the fire department. Everyone should feel safe that their fire department is just a phone call away and you will be there to take care of them. We are a very fortunate community to have such professionalism and um, top-notch people, top-notch equipment. We're, we're so well protected. I would encourage people to take this course. I think that's the best way to, to learn about it and to truly come to appreciate the resources that we have in our community. It doesn't matter how old you are, how mobile, um, you, there's something in each class for everyone. You should take this class. You won't forget it. I, I thought it was one of the best classes I've ever taken. All right, so again, we were really fortunate to be able to have uh, some folks connected with the township that were willing to put that video together. And I, I think that serves as a, a nice testament as to what some people were able to get from this. And just again, that holistic effect that it has um, on the organization and on the community. Um, just to conclude about the Citizens Fire Academy, it had such a positive effect on our organization in nearly as every aspect. So not only from recruiting both operational and administrative members, but it affected our attention because it kept our longtime firefighters, both career and volunteer, engaged with these people from week to week. So once we saw somebody there for night one, one of our firefighters there, 
um, we saw them wanting to come back the next week and the week after and the week after um, because they were so excited to get to deal with these folks once again. It affected our fundraising um, from essentially a trickle down effect. So these people, as soon as they learned about the organization, they educated their neighbors, their friends, their family that lived within our community about what we needed and why the funds were so important. Uh, public support wise, it grew quite a community of advocates for us to be able to call if needed. Uh, we had a lot of these people calling us to see if we needed them to show up at council meetings to, uh, to kind of lay down the law for us and advocate for more funding. Um, and that increased our fire and life safety education programs. Um, so when I have the opportunity to talk about Citizens Fire Academies, I, I try to remember, or I try to remind people how long lasting and how far that outreach and the effect goes, because it, it affects our organizations far, far more than just from a recruitment standpoint. Um, any of the slides, any of the schedules and whatnot from the presentation, I'm happy to share with people. I've got my contact information at the end here. I threw three quick slides in about youth camps, and I know the two after us are going to uh, talk more in depth. Uh, we did two youth camps this year in the fall um, of 2022, and the objectives for these were to increase awareness of our department and community support, as well as our public image. Um, I entered a department that uh, had some blemishes on its record just from uh, a public image standpoint due to a fatal fire and a number of other things. So I've always felt that one of the, the best ways that we can get into a, a home within our community is through the, the children from fire prevention and public education. Um, and I really embrace the start a young mindset. So the earlier that we can start to, to deal with and educate these kids, the more we have the potential that they may want a career in the fire service. Um, and a goal was to create enough interests to generate junior firefighter applicants in the future, which I feel affects both the volunteer and the career fire service because um, both of us are struggling now. It's not just volunteer. So some considerations when we were looking at youth programs, which obviously was far different for me than running a, an adult program was liability was big. Um, so we looked at this substantially as far as what we could and could not do um, in our medical forms and our lease from liability had to be stout and up to date. Um, a few wonderful resources that are available. Uh, the NVFC has some literature um, and some suggestions for this. The IFC and I believe VFIS and Provident also have some resources available. And normally, if one of those are your insurance carriers, they're willing to give some advice on it as well. Uh, we decided to break this up into two age groups, a fire explorer boot camp for fourth through eighth grade. This was a little bit more intense. Uh, we were able to allow them to do more. And then a kid's fire camp for pre-K through third grade. A big concern for me was having an adequate adult to child ratio to make sure that we were taking care of these kids. Um, surprisingly, within 72 hours, we had almost 100 uh, registrations. So I had to turn about 40 people away from this, which were very unhappy with me, but, but we're hoping to do another one here in the spring. Again, the, the funding is difficult because these are expensive. So to do these two camps cost us just over $5,000. Uh, thankfully, we were awarded a grant through the IFC um, for a fire camp, uh, which covered most of the cost. And our key takeaways from this um, was make it a big deal. So for these kids, make it, you know, one of the biggest things they, they're they able to do and accomplish this year. We made sure that each of them had uniforms, both sweatpants and T-shirts, name badges. Uh, they had a signing pledge they had to do when they registered for it and stopped by the fire station. We had a graduation ceremony that you can see here. They had to walk up on stage and uh, accept their diploma and graduate with their the rest of their class. And then we discussed on what to look for next year. So we we're hoping that we were engaging enough uh, through this program and talking about what they could look forward to that it'll keep coming back year to year and eventually lead to volunteer career firefighters. Uh, another thing we had to do is just utilize all available adult resources. So um, as long as you have the clearances of these folks, um, 
you know, the families of our members, social members, anyone who's available, because it's not just uh, the folks that are outside actually actively working with these kids. There are other things logistically that need to be taken care of, such as foods um, and beverage. And uh, as far as the funding goes, reaching out to the community for support, we had a lot of offers for sponsorships as well as food donations and discounts on food to be able to provide to the kids. Uh, so looking into the next year, we're considering a spring and a fall session due to the demand. So again, I mean, we had almost 100 families within 72 hours that tried to register for this. They weren't all from our uh, district. However, I, I didn't close it. I kept it open to our surrounding areas as well so that we could try to help the fire service as a whole, not just South Shurban. Uh, and I welcome anybody to reach out to me for more information. You can visit our Facebook page. There's a few hundred photos on there. Um, through that grant, we were able to pay for a professional photographer to come and document. Um, and you can see on the left here, some of the younger kids camp and on the right, uh, the camp for the fourth through eighth graders. But contact information's there. I appreciate all your time. And Jerry, I appreciate the opportunity to sit and talk with you guys. All righty. We're going to hang on and have questions and answers after the next program. So thank you. If you want to give me control of that again, and I'm going to give control to Cody next. All right. All right, you should have a chair. All right. Well, thank you very much. The uh, next, uh, the next individuals that I'd like to uh, introduce are my friends from Garden Spot Fire Rescue in Lancaster County, uh, Chief Daryl Kaiser, and and Firefighter Cody Straub, and uh, Fire Administrative Officer Nick Good. Uh, they have uh, done a youth camp in Lancaster County for the last couple of years, and I've uh, watched them on social media also. And that's why I've chosen them, because it looks like some best practices. So with that, uh, uh, Chief Daryl Kaiser and Firefighter Cody Straub, it's all yours. Oh, go ahead. Thanks, Jerry. Um, so my name is Cody Straub. I am a um, captain here at Garden Spot Fire Rescue. Sitting next to me is Chief Kaiser. Um, and the two of us together um, a few years ago came up with this idea um, for Garden Spot Fire Rescue to host a cadet camp. Um, so we're going to spend just a few minutes um, tonight going through some of the things that that we do um, both throughout the week and, and to prepare for the camp um, to give you an idea a little bit about our cadet camp. Um, before I get too much into kind of the nuts and bolts, I wanted to make sure um, kind of the two most important things that I feel like when it comes to running a cadet camp that you need to keep in mind. So I want to make sure I get those out there right away. Number one is you need um, a lot of support from your department takes a lot of manpower, um, both during the camp and throughout the year. So you need a lot of support from your department. And we're very uh, fortunate that we have that at Garden Spot Fire Rescue. And then the second thing I want everyone to, to really take away is a camp for kids that you're running should be really hands-on. We try to make our um, cadet camp experience um, a hands-on experience for the kids um, so that they are being firefighters and not just seeing or hearing about firefighters. Um, so going just a little bit into our camp, um, this year will be our third year um, of our cadet camp. We run it in the summer. Um, it's a week-long summer camp. We always aim for the first week of um, summer after kids are out from school, first full week to, to run the camp. It is a nine to four camp. So it is a full day camp, Monday through Thursday. And then Friday morning, we have a morning session and then a Friday evening banquet. Um, like Jordan talked about, we have a, a banquet. Um, we are dressed up in class A's. We make it a, a big ceremony for the kids as they receive their awards for finishing the camp and also have awards for individual campers as well. Um, our camp focuses on 10 to 14 year olds. Um, we chose that age range as the age to um, gain interest or have kids gain interest in, in the fire service before they're able to join as junior members in our um, in our department. So we have 10 to 14 year olds. Our first year we had 32 cadets. Um, last year we had 39 cadets. And this year, although we haven't opened up our application 
um, period yet, we've decided that we're capping our our camp at 40 cadets. Um, we think it's really important to keep the numbers small. Um, as I talked about, we want to make it a hands-on experience for kids. And to do that, we need to keep the numbers small so they have the most opportunities um, to do different hands-on experiences, but also have adults available to help them. Um, a little bit about our camp throughout the, the week. Um, each day, we will focus on one different discipline. So engine company, truck company, and rescue company, and the different skills that are involved with those. Um, engine company day involves stretching hose line, hitting hydrants, learning about the different um, riding assignments, as well as hose line management um, and packing line. Um, the truck day, we do a search. So we have a maze set up in our, our department. We do a search. Um, we talk about ladders um, and different truck company disciplines. And then our rescue day is a day that we focus on vehicle rescue. And each year we try and pick one other um, specialty to focus on, whether it's um, our water rescue, rope, um, or some other discipline that our rescue company focuses on and, and teach that to the kids. Um, we're lucky enough at our department that we're able to host the camp at our uh, main station for um, four out of the five days. And we have a training center that we're able to host the, the other day at. So we keep everything in-house where it's um, at our department or at our training center. And we have all the resources that we need here for the kids to be able to to participate throughout the week. I'll just interject there too. Uh, and, and as um, the former or uh, earlier uh, speaker said, uh, we open it up to our uh, neighboring area too. So we're not just recruiting within our first two, we're recruiting all across uh, our, our area here, our school district. Uh, and some of our neighboring mutual aid departments come in and help us on the individual days. So that's, that's a big help as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So for each day, we will have between 10 and 15 volunteers from Garden Spot um, Fire Rescue working, as well as at least one mutual aid company coming in to help. Um, we match up so that our mutual aid truck companies coming in for the truck day, our rescue companies coming in, and so on and so forth. Um, so that we have between 20 and 25 adults working with these 40 um, kids. The way that we split our 40 kids up is we have four different um, groups. Um, we have our engines, two engine groups, a truck group and a rescue group, and that's their group for the week, kind of their, their team that they go with. Each group has a group leader, which is an adult who stays with them throughout the week. And then depending on what um, skill they're working on, they have different instructors for each one. So there's at least two or three adults with each um, group throughout their hands-on skills, which we find super helpful. We also find it helpful that we have one kind of go-to adult for every group. That's their person who's not necessarily teaching or being their instructor, but is there for them throughout the week if they have any questions or things like that. And then they have separate instructors who, who they go through um, throughout the week. Um, just some other things that we do um, in our camp. We also have, besides our mutual fire departments come in, we also have other first responder groups come in. Um, we had last year, our local police department came in and gave a presentation on um, their department. We had our county hazmat team come in and give a presentation on some of the things that they do, how they might interact with the fire department and some of the specialties that they focus on. And then we had a whole afternoon where our local EMS agency came in and they actually did hands-on activities with the kids, um, learning CPR and first aid skills as well. So we found it super helpful to give the kids other uh, opportunities to learn about the other first responding or first responders in our, in our local area. Um, so that's a little bit about what our camp looks like. Like I said, it's a week long, nine to four in the summertime. Um, and throughout that week, um, we are, like I said, it's very manpower intensive with a lot of people helping and a lot of moving parts. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about those moving parts and how everything comes together throughout the year. Um, I'm the chair of our, our cadet camp committee, um, and we have a committee of right now 10 firefighters, 10 members that meet throughout the year. We started meeting in uh, November 
and we'll meet all the way through June, um, at least monthly, sometimes more if needed. And I found it very helpful to have a committee. And in that committee, we separate our, our assignments or our responsibilities for the year. So for example, I have two of the committee members focusing on recruitment um, and how we're going to get the word out to um, potential cadets. I have a, a member focusing on food for the week. So going out to local businesses, we're very lucky in our local area that many businesses will donate um, or discount um, and provide lunches for us for, uh, through the week. So I have someone focusing on that. I have someone focusing on gear and acquiring gear from local departments to help us. Um, like Jordan mentioned, um, one of the biggest challenges is finding gear that can be used for kids. We, like I said, we like to do as much hands-on things that includes in gear. Um, so finding gear that can be functional for them is, is a challenge. Um, so those committee members are reaching out throughout the county um, to try and try and find departments that have that gear for us. We also have uh, members, committee members that are focusing on apparel. Each kid is given work pants and multiple cadet shirts to wear throughout the week. So designing and ordering those so that they're ready for um, the week of camp. And then I also have members working on applications, which I'll touch on in just a few minutes, and a schedule or a curriculum for, for the week. Um, so giving those each committee member a different responsibility and a different job to work on kind of takes this really big task or this big event and breaks it down and that each person has a, a smaller part to focus on throughout the year, which makes it much more manageable for us as a committee. Um, so just talking a little bit about um, how we select cadets, how we recruit um, cadets. The biggest thing that we found for recruitment, social media really does wonders. It's a great way to get um, information out to uh, a mass amount of people. So we have a Facebook page, we have a website, and we keep those up to date and are posting constantly. Um, at the beginning of the year, so in January, we posted our save the date for this year um, for our camp, which is June 12th to the 16th. Um, so already that information is out for the community. Um, other things we do, we get into our local schools. Our local school district lets us come in for at least one lunch um, where we're able to present to the different lunches and to the different kids um, about our camp and about our, our department in general as a way to, to get words out. Um, and then we also make up different posters and flyers. We have posters that are sent out to every kid through our local school district. We make sure everyone gets one that's sent home um, with them. We have in the past had open houses and kind of open trainings. We found those are beneficial as well, as especially as you're just getting started or if people are curious about your department in general. It's a great way to open up, whether it's a, a weekly training night, opening that up. Um, for people to come and watch um, and you can present on your training and, and explain what your department is and, and show the potential, potential cadets a little bit more about your department. And we also had an open house that was meant just for cadets um, to come and look at our station, um, get those applications that they need um, and take a tour and meet some of the firefighters. Um, we do have applications each year for cadets, like I said, we limit or we are capping ours at 40. So if it ever becomes a case where there are more than 40 applicants this year, um, we will look at our applications as the way to um, decide what cadets will be accepted into our program. The applications consist of basic information, uh, medical information, um, contact information, but then there's also parts of the application where cadets must fill out on their own, asking questions about um, why they wanna be in a, uh, or be a part of the fire service, what they're hoping to gain from the week of camp and questions like that. We want to, through that application, start seeing and hearing the buy-in from the cadets. Um, throughout the, um, before they start their week. Um, so those applications must be filled out and turned in to be considered for our camp. After we have those applications in, before our camp week, we have orientation nights. That's where we bring both the parents or families together and the cadets before they, be, before they start their week-long camp. 
This orientation serves for parents as a way to explain to them what our camp is going to look like. Um, Chief Kaiser's kind of famous opening line is, this is not a babysitting service. Um, so we want to make that kind of clear right away. Um, we um, have a lot that we want to do throughout the week. The kids work very hard and they're going to learn a lot, but we expect a lot from them. And, and we try and make that clear to, to parents and families before they get into the, the week of cadet camp. Um, for the cadets themselves, that orientation serves as a chance to answer some interview questions. They go into small groups with different firefighters from our department. And they answer some more in-depth interview questions so we can start to get to know them as cadets and also their um, intentions and interests in, in the fire service or emergency services. Um, so that's been a really helpful night as a way to, to meet people um, and share our expectations, our goals with both families and cadets. Did you have anything you want to add? No, I, I mean, we uh, when we meet with the parents, again, we're not a babysitting service, and our, our intention is to recruit these kids to get them interested in the fire service long before they get, uh, and not that uh, school sports are bad, but they can be a part of the fire department 365 days a year and uh, hopefully get them locked in uh, so that uh, through their their high school years that they're interested in and possibly pursue a career. And again, that's why we bring in the EMS and, and uh, the police department as well uh, for emergency services uh, that we're not just recruiting for fire department, but uh, for emergency services in general. And uh, we want the kids to go home tired. They do PT in the, uh, in the morning. They start off the morning with PT and and uh, Cody works them hard throughout the day. We tell them that they'll come home with lots of stories to tell and then hopefully crash uh, and, and get a good night's sleep to get up and get ready to do it again the next day. Yeah, so just to piggyback off of that, like I said at the beginning, this is this is a hands-on experience. Um, we have have those teams going around in small groups, and they are they are getting hands-on throughout the week. They are they are being firefighters. They're not just watching and learning about firefighting. They're becoming firefighters, um, and we feel like that age ten to fourteen is kind of that sweet spot um, for those kids that um, can start learning about the fire service and start doing and, and being firefighters. Um, so we found that that age group has worked very well. We also in those groups or in our cadet camp will split groups by ages. So we can differentiate a little bit for older kids or younger kids as needed um, and push the older kids a little more with some more hands-on things and maybe do some more demonstration or, or helping with, with the smaller um, younger kids as well. Um, so this is a, a, a week long camp, but it's a year long event, I would say for our department, our preparation, um, many, many people, many hands are involved throughout the year. And that's what kind of makes our camp successful, I think. Um, so what's our end product What do we as, as a department, I think, get out of this? Well, we, um, community and school involvement, I think has gone up in the past couple of years. Um, I am actually a, a teacher, so I already have that connection in the school district, um, but I, I have noticed a, a, um, a bigger connection between the secondary campus um, schools, so middle school and high school in our department, whether it's communication with um, firefighters that are at school, but also a part of our um, department, or sharing some of the different initiatives at school and at the fire department. Um, that has definitely increased the past couple of years, as well as community involvement. We go out and um, try to fund as much of this camp through donations as possible, which is great as we get the funds that we need, but we're also going out in, into the community. Nick um, Good, who is on here, and many other people are going out into the community and talking with businesses about what we're doing. Um, so, so we're making people aware of what Garden Spot Fire Rescue is doing um, with our cadet camp. Um, of along course, with that, along with that, uh, during the week, we invite our municipal leaders, uh, whether it be a borough councilman or township supervisors, township managers, also uh, our state representatives, uh, state senators, we invite them to stop in either during the week or come to our award ceremony at the end of the week uh, and have them talk about, uh, you know, that this is 
uh, community service and, and a way to be part of the community and help your community uh, to serve in this aspect. So I think we've had a lot of positive light on our department through this, which is obviously a huge benefit. Um, but uh, the other major benefit and the thing that, that we're looking for is we're looking for um, members. We're trying to recruit potential members um, of our volunteer service. Um, so we have a revamped, I would say, in the past few years, junior program that is now taking members right from the cadet program after they turn 14 and joining, and joining our department and becoming members. Um, and I, we have a really good program in place that continues their learning from cadet camp right into our junior program with weekly trainings, um, small group trainings with cadets. Yeah. Um, and in the past three years, um, well, two years, um, we have had six members, six graduates of camp who have become members with us. Um, and we have had multiple cadets return for their second year and we expect them to return for their third year. So we we feel like the group that is coming and the groups that are that are interested are are we're gaining their interest and, and they're sticking with it and they're gaining that interest in the fire service. Um, so like I said, we had six graduates of camp that are now members of Garden Spot Fire Rescue and we have multiple cadets who have returned for um, a second year of cadet camp and we're um, okay. hoping that they return for a third year and become leaders of the cadet camp. Um, I actually have one of our junior members um, with us. He is a two-year um, participant of our cadet camp and just in February was um, voted in as a member to Garden Spot Fire Rescue. This is um, Gabe Yankowski. Um, and Gabe was going to talk for just a few seconds about his experience of cadet camp and how it transitioned him to now being a, a junior firefighter. It was one of the hardest things for me because it was several different challenging ways. It was more physical than I was used to normally. So that pushed me in many ways. And when the tools are much heavier than I thought they were, so it was also another challenge. But then also just being around all the firefighters for so long for the week, it would just made me feel a special connection to serve the community. So I decided to be a firefighter and join the company as a junior the following year. Awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So that is a little bit about our camp. Um, if I scroll through my slides here, um, down at the bottom is my contact information as well as Chief Kaiser and um, Nick Good. If you have more questions, we do have, um, I would be more than happy to share whether it's your our curriculum, some of the things that I make sure our committee does throughout the year, our checklist checklists throughout the year to make sure we're ready for our week or um, different um, ways that we are organizing things or else our application. I'd be more than happy to share anything um, with anyone who is interested. Anyone is also welcome to come uh, observe for a day uh, and uh, participate or, or just observe. Um, I know Cody would welcome you guys, whether it be just for a morning or an afternoon, uh, but it's pretty neat what they got going on. Uh, I, Cody and I had a tailboard uh, talk and I picked Cody because he's a teacher, and uh, but we also have a number of guys too that are career firefighters along with being the volunteers here. And uh, so then they have days during the week off to help with instruction and so on. Just thought it would be a great idea and Cody has taken the, the ball and run with it, uh, it far beyond uh, my first initial uh, dream of it. And he had, it was funny when we we talked, had our tailboard talk, he's like, I've thought about this too. And it's like, well, let's do it. Let's make it happen. So it's been great. We've, and we're excited to see it to continue to grow and bring in members. Um, the thing with Gabe was kind of uh, ad lib. I walked in tonight. I had to go to a municipality meeting. Uh, that's why I was late getting on. And uh, when I walked in the door, I saw Gabe there and knew that he had just started. And I thought, hey, if we can pull him in uh, and have give him a uh, quick talk, that'd be great. Uh, it's uh, firsthand knowledge of what's going on and what we're doing. Excellent uh, job bringing Gabe in for that. Uh, and that that definitely, uh, this is Jerry again, everybody. And many of you that know me uh, certainly know my passion to engage the community because when the chips are down and you may be facing some challenges from, from whomever, 
the community will stand up for you if you prove yourself to the community and engage the community doing these type of things and uh, just the awesome awesomeness about this. So we're going to open up for questions. Uh, the first question, too, is about this will go to uh, you, Cody, and, and Chief Kaiser. It came in uh, about the cost of, of uh, you have a student fee, okay? And uh, obviously people did not have a concern spending a $100 application fee, correct? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah we, we felt like uh, that they had to, and again, this is, uh, we're not a babysitting service. And you could say, well, we got to pay to be a babysitting service, but we felt like they needed to be involved. In, and we don't want that to deter anybody if, if a family would be uh, pressed that they couldn't uh, pay the $100 fee. But we got plenty of people that'll step up and sponsor a student, but I don't think we've even had to deal with that uh, through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. So, um, so it, it, it's kind of for them to have skin in the game. Again, that then helps pay for, uh, we do t-shirts. They get two t-shirts. It's kind of their uniform for the week. Uh, with that they wear with pride, believe me, uh, you see them wearing them and they, they love the, uh, when they come out then on uh, to the award ceremony, they got their their t-shirts on and uh, it that pretty much is why we we decided to do a cost. Again, we thought it'd be free. We just get lots of just anybody and everybody uh, coming in. Excellent. So I'm gonna open it up for questions and how I normally handle this, those of you that have been on webinars before is just go ahead and either raise your hand or just kind of just start talking. Hopefully we won't talk over each other, but uh, uh, questions. Cody, uh, just wondering how long have you had your program in place over Garden Spot? This will be our this will be our third year. So 2020 was supposed to be our first year. We canceled. Um, so 2021, 2022. So the summer of 2023 will be our third year. But we've been really planning for four years, if that makes sense. So your return on investment has already shown. How, I saw that you said you had the one firefighter there. How many other juniors have you had come out of the program? So we had six actual graduates from the program. Um, I would have to look at the numbers, but from year one to year two, I think we had about a 50% um, return rate. So obviously, if you're not 14, you can't join yet, but you're welcome back at the camp. And I think we had about 50% return from year um, one to two. And we expect pretty similar numbers this year again. Thank you. The other thing with that, the other thing with that too is we have members, kids that are involved, but like Gabe has no firefighting uh, service in his family. Uh, so that that's the neat thing. So about fifty percent of what we're pulling in is kids that. Just, uh, you know, it's a family business. Uh, my kid's a firefighter. My dad was a firefighter. So, uh, but we're hopefully reaching out. And again, this was also uh, our deputy chief, his his son went through and he would be one of the ones that went through the first camp and then joined. Uh, but it was an opportunity for him to bring his friends. Uh, and, and hey, this is the cool thing that I know. I, 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 I know, had no doubt in my mind that Trevor would join the fire company. Uh, but if I gave Trevor an opportunity to bring some of his friends and show his friends how cool uh, the stuff that we do is, then that would be a great opportunity to recruit some of his friends. And kind of an unintended consequence of um, cadets returning for multiple years. We do switch up the camp slightly, so they're seeing something new, but still practicing some of the skills, but also lets them be leaders of the camp. So by the time they're 14, now they they feel that they have some some leadership skills already as they become a member of our department. So we think that's valuable as well. Jordan, how many years have you guys actually got? I know you. How many years have you actually got a chance to run your uh, program? So including the inaugural year in my former department, uh, I think we were on four, and we're going to be doing it in my new department for the first time this upcoming spring. Have you seen any benefit? Have you seen any of your township supervisors or borough managers coming out for it, uh, especially like your elected officials? Have they been out for the program? Yeah. So in the inaugural one at my former department, we had one of the council members that was a member of it. Um, 
and you could see in the following years that there was a benefit to him having had that knowledge. Um, it was a major eye opener. I am hoping that in the spring here, we're going to have at least one or two of our elected, our local elected officials um, enroll in our course that we have coming up. Thanks, Jordan. Absolutely. Question for Jordan um, on the uh, the Citizen Academy. What what time frames, like time of year and time of day, did you schedule your the classes? Yeah, we we went around with this uh, pretty substantially, and then we also uh, did a survey with everyone after to see if they'd prefer that we change the time of year. We did this in a September through November time frame, which you know, it was tough because you're battling back to school and you're battling the start of the holidays. Um, that's, that's our, that's our problem. That's just the problem we seem to be having. Right. Um, tried to do evening. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Finish, finish your thought. No, it, it, that's exactly right. So with surveying them, it, the results were kind of interesting because the majority still preferred that time of year rather than in the spring. Um, our classes were at six 30 and, uh, they would go until 9 30. I'm real big on we have to end at 9 30 on the dot because of respecting their time. Um, but we had a lot of classes that carried over. And a lot of the times, I mean, people would stay 45 minutes after just to talk with the firefighters anyway. But I, I tried to keep the classes at no more than three hours of scheduled time. Yeah, pre pre COVID, um, our, our, we had stopped our classes obviously through COVID, but um, we had a, the last academy we had, Citizens Academy, we had, we had a very low turnout because of the time of year. It was fall. Sure. Uh, the parents had kids in sports, school, for them to be there. For, and we ran it about the same time frame, 6, 6, 6.30 to 9.30. Yep. And it, it, they seen, it seemed to be too late for them. And we just didn't, we had, just didn't have the interest. So I'm trying something new this year, one evening and then some uh, two weekends mm -hmm. all day and to see how that goes. But I'm going to do surveys also. But right. that's why I was asking that question, because that seemed to be our problem. Yeah, we, we looked at that as well. And one of the things we also discussed was looking at a like a late January or February start since People have hit the new year. There might be some resolutions out there to get more involved in the community. And it may help people that are struggling with not having things to do uh, in the winter. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously the challenges that brings us is we're very limited as to what we can do outside. Um, right. It makes things tough, but that's something we looked at also. Okay. Todd, thank you. Sorry, yeah. sorry to cross the questions, Todd. Did you run your program once a week or did you run it multiple days during the week? It was two nights. Um, it was, this was prior to me, me taking over. Um, I had just taken over. I just got promoted to battalion chief for our department and taken over uh, fire prevention. So prior to that, yeah, I think he, I think the chief prior to me, we ran it two nights. It was two nights a week um, at those time frames, And it ran like four weeks. Jordan, it seems like the weeks. Jordan, it seems like the once a week model was pretty successful then. Yeah, what, did you're, did it, what you were seeing. Once a week on Wednesdays. Okay, and you went six weeks. We went six, yeah, and then we had the graduation as an additional course. One of the things we found was it was just we needed one more night to to really fit in everything that we had wanted to. Um, but I mean, it worked out with with the the amount of time we had. The other reason we were going to extend it a week is because of the results of the surveys we've gotten is that people wanted one more week of class time. So we'll do it. Thank you. Sure. Thanks to both. Other questions? Other questions? So one other format, we do run a Citizens Fire Academy in my department also. Uh, I used to run it five nights, uh, five weeks, uh, with the four core skills and the fifth night being the uh, graduation ceremony. But then last year we did uh, a Saturday, uh, the whole thing on a Saturday. And, and that seemed to get, you know, we had probably 18 or 19. We got... Okay. 
three new members out of that. And it was the time. And it was the time issue with that. Now, when I first started, uh, you know, we didn't go every year. I think 10 years ago is when I started where I am now. Uh, and we did bring the elected officials through, uh, the township commissioners, or at least two of them, uh, the state rep uh, and a couple. But I, I do, you know, I, I do uh, concur that, uh, you know, when, when it comes to the engage community engagement and the support of it, you know, uh, that video that was done by, you uh, Jordan and uh, the media people, uh, that, that, those testimonies, you are not going to get that, 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 I mean, if you get testimony like that, uh, you know, if you're fighting a budget battle for something, uh, those people are going to be the first ones to comment at the uh, public piece. And uh, I'm a, I'm a big pro. I, again, part of my, what I do for a living is I, I try to engage elected officials and, you know, in today's world of cost containment and all those challenges, you know, it's the citizens that will stand up for you and the youth camp, the, the moms and dads that send their kids to the youth camps, uh, because we do have an honorable thing that we do. Uh, and just, you know, even though I, I do get some feedback from some of my members at times about, oh, now this is another program, you know, we just want to train and go on calls. You know, again, the, the survival of the fire service depends on the community engagement and the people that pay the bills. Okay. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. And uh, these are ex these two uh, examples were excellent examples. I want to thank, uh, you know, uh, Jordan Kramer. I, I also want to thank Daryl and the team from Garden Spot. And, and again, I, I, I recognize uh, Todd from, from York Area United, and you, you probably could find some information on theirs on their website or their Facebook page and things like that, because I remember when I worked for a company in York, uh, we sent our employees through there. Uh, and you know, the company that I worked for was VFIS. And we sent a lot oh. of the, we sent a lot of the people right. who worked in the claims department and uh, that were not necessarily firefighters and things like that. And they really learned a lot. So you have to excellent the, opportunity. Academy. Yep. Yeah. Any last questions that anybody has? Well, thank you all, uh, and have a great evening. Talk to you all later. Thank you.